What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can benchmark your code in Golang, how you can use that to improve existing functions, existing programs, uh, to check how many allocations we are doing and um, because you need to understand that, uh, of course, we cannot avoid allocations all the time in our program, but the less allocations we have, the faster our program will run. So, but before we continue, if you're not subscribed yet to my channel, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. All right, so I have this file open here in Golang. It's basically a, a test file. So if you want to make a bench in Golang, you actually just... Uh, create a test file, the name underscore test.go basically. In this case, I'm just call it bench test uh, because it could be foo test, bar test, whatever, as long as you have a test um, at the end, underscore test at the end of your file, right? So basically to benchmark, in Golang, we can just do func uh, and then we can say bench. No normally it would, yes, it would have a snippet here. So basically uh, every function that is prefixed with benchmark will basically um, will be eligible to benchmark, right? It's it's that easy, no big of a deal. So we're gonna say benchmark uh, foo or something, right? We have a testing.b, normally we have a testing.t, but in this case, we have a testing.b, right? Testing.testing and testing.benchmark, probably, something like that, don't really matter, right? So basically, uh, for benchmarking, we can do it in a couple of ways, right? So, what you would do is basically just make a for loop here, right? And in this for loop, instead of this count thingy, we're gonna say b.n, right? And b.n basically uh, is, is some kind of thing that's getting injected, the number of iterations and all that stuff. Uh, don't worry about it, it's just being handled by Go itself. So basically, <coughs> everything above this function here, right? Is basically in initialization, right? Uh, initialization of the codes. Right, this will not be taken into account of your benchmark. Everything inside here uh, will be actually the bench code, right? The benchmark uh, code you wanna perform, right? So let's take a very, very simple example, right? So let's say we're gonna have uh, in this function, we're gonna basically create some integers, a slice of integers, right? So we're gonna say uh, int, and we're gonna allocate this, uh, basically in initialize this uh, slice of integers, and of course, what am I doing here? Just like that, right? We have basically um, a non-allocated uh, slice of integers, right? So then, basically gonna loop, right? Because we're gonna add some integers to it. So we're gonna loop, for example, let's make here an, an, a variable. We're gonna say n is going to be 1,000, right? We're gonna, uh, 100, we're gonna do 100 loops here, right? And what we're gonna say is we're gonna say that int equals uh, append int and we're gonna append y. This is basically how I see a lot of people uh, doing stuff. Most of the time you have no option, uh, but you will see, you will see later on, hold on, right? So if we run this benchmark, right? We can just click it here uh, in VS Code. So it's basically going to run this benchmark and we see some stuff, right? We see uh, how many nanoseconds per operation it has, how many bytes per operation, and then we have basically how many allocations per operation we have. And in this case, it's gonna be eight allocations, right? So how can we improve this function? Actually, to be honest, yeah, no, let's let's uh, take it step by step. How can we improve this function, right? Because now we have a measure. Basically, what's going on here? Um, now we have something to measure here, right? And uh, it's gonna be eight allocs, so we know that, that's fine, right? So the next thing you would do, actually, is, uh, for example, uh, make another function, we're gonna say benchmark. Let's call this benchmark, um, Slice, slice non-alloc, right? That basically means that we're gonna have a, a non-allocated slice. And in this case, we're gonna call this benchmark uh, slice alloc, which we're gonna have an allocated slice. So I'm gonna copy this code, right? And we're gonna do it in two manners, right? You could do it in two ways, and I'm gonna show you both. So this case, uh, instead of making this slice here, this non-allocated slice, we're gonna basically allocate it, pre-allocate the slice. So we're gonna say, make me a slice of integers, and the length of this is going to be n, right? B because we're going to do 100 iterations. And so we basically can already pre-allocate that with 100, right? 
And then instead of doing this append stuff, we're gonna say that int y equals y, right? That's the thing. If we run this, we can see that we have only one allocation, right? So we are basically a lot faster. You will see that this this uh, time operation and then this bytes is gonna be is gonna be less, right? Well, this I'm not sure, but hey, don't worry about it, right? So the th the main thing to take away is that we are basically doing less allocation, so we are going to be faster at the end, right? And that's actually very simple. Uh, why is that? Because we basically do one big allocation of our integer slice. So we basically make it as big as 100. So the only thing we need to do is assign that to the memory slots that are already being created under the hood, right? And in this case, we basically just create a slice. We don't know how long it's gonna be. So uh, when is there going to be an allocation? Each time, each time the slice needs to grow, right? It is what it is. <clears throat> okay, cool. So basically, uh, in this case, you can see we have two of these functions here to benchmark, and that's basically a little bit um, verbose, actually, right? So we can fix that. What we could do is we could say here, uh, we can call this testing b here, and we're gonna say b run, right? And we can give this a name, and I'm gonna call this uh, slice uh, non-alloc, right? And then it's gonna take a function uh, closure actually, function closure, and that's going to be a B. It's going to be a testing.b, right? Testing.b, just like that, right? And then we can basically copy our code inside of this function, just like that, right? And in this case, basically everything here will be initialization, right? Will not be taken uh, into account of our benchmark, right? So we have this slice non lock. So what we can also do is basically copy this uh, B run thingy and we're gonna place it here below. And we're gonna say slice alloc. And then we're gonna copy this code. And we're gonna paste it in here, right? So we can delete this just like that. Boom. And uh, maybe some space, trim some space, hey. Right, so we have this benchmark slice non lock. We could actually co uh, rename this to benchmark slice. Right? And then we have a slice, no, actually we could do non -alloc, the non alloc version and the allocated version to basically compare them uh, with each other, right? If we run the benchmark, if we run, <laughs> if we run the benchmark, then we can see we have eight allocations here and we have one allocation here. And you can see we are a lot faster here, less uh, by sort operations. And of course we have uh, much more less allocations. So or allocated version of our slice is much faster. So that's the way to go, right? That's how you basically benchmark, right? So uh, how can we actually uh, use that to basically um, improve code, right? For example, I'm gonna make a simple example. It's gonna be a very short video, but very uh, hands-on and very uh, direct. So we're gonna say, for example, we're gonna make a function here and we're gonna call that uh, write to buffer or something, right? And we're gonna say a message and it's gonna be a byte. And of course you could return something or, uh, hey, this is just some pseudo code to give you an ID. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, once again, I uh, recently make a vi made a video about a bytes buffer, right? And hey, guess what? We're gonna use it again, right? Bytes buffer is basically uh, my best friend in Golang. So we're gonna say buffer is, gonna to be, is going to be a new bytes buffer, right? And then we're gonna say buff write, and we're gonna write a message to the buffer, right? So what's, what's gonna happen is basically we're gonna open up a buffer and we're gonna write a, um, the message into that buffer, right? And call it a day. Very simple code, of course. In real life scenario, you're gonna do uh, some other stuff with that, right? You're gonna, I don't know, um, hey, be creative, be creative. Right, so we have this uh, write to buffer, right? So let's make a benchmark. And we're gonna say benchmark, uh, let's call this write to buffer or something. Just like that, it's fine. Then we're gonna say for, hop, and we're gonna say it's gonna be a B, N, right? Perfectly fine. And we're gonna say write to buffer, of course, a message here. Um, two things you could do, you could actually uh, put a message in here, it's gonna be foo or something, but you could also make the message here, uh, which is gonna be a slice, it's gonna be foo, right? Just like that. It doesn't really matter, right? So let's do MSG like this. Uh, and what you're gonna do, basically it's very important because right now we are testing this function once, which is not the case. We actually wanna um, 
look, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another loop here, and we're gonna basically write to buffer to basically prove my point here uh, how, on how you can actually improve stuff by benchmarking, right? So, uh, you need to understand this is basically looping. This is basically all uh, bench stuff. Internal, internal bench stuff right here. Internal bench stuff handled by Golang itself, right? Maybe do a capital G. Um, and this is basically our logic, right? Our logic is going to be here, right? And uh, why are we looping 100 times? Because you never know. Maybe you're basically inside of a connection, clients coming in, or, you, or, or you're doing some computation, and you're basically um, recreating this bytes buffer, right? That's what I wanna wanna simulate real quick. That we are recreating this bytes buffer, right? Cool. So let's run this benchmark real quick. Uh, right, so you can see we have 100 allocations, right? This is already nasty, right? We have 100 allocations. Let me quickly sip my coffee. Because I can, right? So, 100 allocations here. And why is that, right? A lot of people already noticed, right? So basically, we are saying here, right to buffer, right? And we are creating uh, continuously a new bytes buffer. And that's an allocation, right? So we have 100 loops. So we're going to have 100 allocations to this bytes buffer. And you could say, yeah, but that's actually easy, but that's uh, that's easy to spot, but that's not true. You would be surprised if you would go to your own code and basically try to uh, benchmark small units of your code, you're going to see sometimes that there are a lot of allocations, right? And you're going to say, what the hell? Something you basically uh, forgot or something you didn't think about, because most of the time you are not thinking about all these uh, improvements, right? Because that's a little bit um, how technology is going, right? Uh, how it's being educated, how it's being tutorialized is that we are building stuff, we are building microservices, we are building uh, e-commerce websites and all that stuff, right? And people are basically so focused on how to structure their folders, on how to uh, name their variables, on how to do authentication and all that stuff that they forgot that there is uh, also something and that is called uh, a performance layer in your application. Of course, it's not the most important. Well, it's a very important layer, but it's not the, the layer that needs to be prioritized, right? First of all, you need to make it work. Then you need to make it a little bit better. And then you can think about on performance. But still, performance is important uh, at scale, right? Just want to wanna give you that. So basically, you, want, you, you would be surprised if you are taking small pieces of your code and try to benchmark it, you will see that you, uh, most of the time, well, most of the time, that most, that in some cases you could improve your code a lot uh, by reusing stuff and try to minimize allocations, right? So basically, <coughs> we had this, um, let's do it again because I'm basically uh, drifting off in this conversation here. So we have this uh, 100 allocations. Why? Because we're basically creating this bytes buffer uh, 100 times, right? And like I said, it could be that you forgot something or you were focused on something else, uh, but you didn't know, right? Nobody's going to tell you. Nobody's going to feel it unless you benchmark it, right? So how can we fix that? Well, it's very simple. We could say, hey, give me uh, a buffer. My keyboard is uh, slippy, slippy, slippery. So we're going to say actually B, for example, or buff, is going to be a bytes buffer here, right? And actually we need a pointer here to this thing. Uh, bytes buffer, right? That's the first thing we can do, but... Is that? I don't think so, right? Uh, because uh, using a bytes buffer here, let's let's actually just do it, right? We're gonna say buff write, and uh, because we're gonna keep refactoring this until it's good, right? So we have write buff uh, write to buffer. We're gonna call. We're gonna put buffer here, right? Uh, we're gonna make a buffer. Of course, we're gonna make that buffer not in our. Um, we're gonna not make it here, and we are not gonna make it here, right? We're gonna make it completely outside of the benchmarking stuff. So we're going to say bytes is going to, is going to be a new uh, bytes buffer, something like that, right? And then we're basically uh, going to, yeah, it's going to be fine, right? If we run this real quick. Yeah, you can see we have zero allocations. Why is that? Well, uh, it's because our write to buffer function, instead of having 100 allocations, you need to understand that this function in the previous test, in the previous ben bench, this function really did 100 allocations. It is what it is. And right now, we don't do zero allocations, 
right? Because we have this one bytes buffer that we actually created outside of our, our bench scope and we are keep writing to that buffer, right? Um, of course, you could say most of the time you will have one allocation because you're basically going to allocate this bytes buffer one more time somewhere in your code. But I um, just want to test this function. And this function right now does zero allocation instead of 100 by doing this small improvement, improvement, right? Uh, next thing I would do basically is not using a bytes buffer. I think it's a little bit too strict. It's, it's a dependency we don't need. We're going to say it's going to be an R. No, actually a W is going to be an IO writer. It's going to be an interface, right? And instead of saying buff write, we're going to say W write, right? The writer is going to write what is going to be that writer. We don't care. We don't know. It's just need to be an IO writer, right? And hey, luckily for us, uh, a bytes buffer is an IO writer. So we don't need to do anything. Look at this beautiful code. So if we run this again, then we're going to see, uh, we're going to have zero allocations, right? It's going to stay the exact same. Um, do we need to do something else? Of course, you could say right to buffer. You could actually do a buff reset here if you really want. Uh, just like that. Uh, so basically, this is keep writing to the same buffer here. Right? We're going to keep writing to the same writer. If you don't want that, you can reset the buffer. But I think it's going to be fine for now. Hey, that was it. Very important. Uh, performance is and zero. Allo you need to take away that performance is not your priority, but it's something that you cannot deny, right? And you would be surprised how many functions, if you're basically trying to benchmark them, uh, how many functions you can actually improve in performance, right? And if you can do it with one function, you can do it with 100 functions and all these little improvements stack up in memory, uh, better memory management, uh, in, in, in faster CPU cycles and all that stuff, right? So very important to take, uh, to uh, do that once in a while, right? Do some benchmarks, especially if you think um, it's needed, right? If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. If you're not already, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments. And I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or future videos or in my Discord community. Peace.